In this video, I'll show you how you can add an external camera selector to PDC Extreme. And PDC Extreme is our flagship PDC controller. You can find it here on our website, darkroomscarhoy.com, where you can search up images of basically all our products. That's a really nice tool. If you um, are a reseller, if you just want to study our catalog of, of products, you get it by image here. There's uh, various information available and um, so on. Anyway, uh, Extreme, type that in. You'll see PDC Extreme and um, an image of it looks like that great okay so back here this is the ui of a pc extreme and in this case i've chosen the standard configuration that most people will choose this is actually quite a unique concept uh for skyhoy that we have these default configs that's the list of things that will make you fly out of the box so when you choose generic pc control you are ready to just control pc cameras but there are various variations and the one we'll be looking at today is called stream deck studio because that product, the Stream Deck Studio, is a one-rack unit device with 32 buttons. They have uh, image capability in the displays and also knobs for paging. So it's pretty interesting for a, an external camera selector. And that's what we'll be looking at in this video. So first, what you see here is me having already added a bunch of cameras. And if we go to the simulator, we have a screen view of this, basically. So oh, right now we at camera 21. So if I zoom in on my camera selector, you can see camera number one, camera number two, three, four, etc. So I can just uh, pick any camera here using that camera selector. But that's one we want to change. So we'll go back to the home screen here and then we'll change over to Stream Deck Studio. OK, so I luckily get the same selection of cameras, even though I changed the config over. But notice one thing that is now different. We have this field and that field will allow us to pick a Stream Deck Studio. And I have one on the table right here. It's just waiting for us. You see, it's saying waiting for all panel. And that is because if you read our article from our wiki on Stream Deck, uh, the Stream Deck Studio can be connected via USB or network to reactor and uh, in this case, it's actually network, PoE powered. And this application, XPanel Stream Deck, which is a licensed application that will con convert Stream Deck Studio and other Stream Decks on USB into a raw panel network device, very easy to integrate with Reactor. That's like a $100 application. So there's a license fee here, but that is running on my uh, PDC Extreme. So basically in here, we have this one running. And if you look at the configuration for it, you will find that it is set up with the IP address of the Stream Deck Studio right there. It's enabled. It has large text in the display and a so-called LED mode called background, which gives you the background color behind the white text in the displays. Going back here, if I add a new panel, you'll see it searching on the network and my Stream Deck Studio is actually available on the network. You'll even see the IP address and the port mentioned on the Stream Deck is the same, the one you see right there. So it's quite easy to add it in and you have it already right now. Hmm, it looks like things are blanked out. Why? Because I decided with this config to also add authentication. One of the special things on Stream Deck Studio is that it can scan your NFC tag. And that basically goes for anything from your key fob for your office to your travel card, to your MasterCard, to whatever you have. You can basically connect them to it. So let me show you what happens if I use my travel card from the public transportation and I hold it over the NFC reader. You see now it's actually converted into a camera selector product. OK, so I'm just selecting different cameras here on my... Um, Stream Deck Studio. And I can even page using the encoder knob. I'm not sure you can see the LED there, but there is actually a little LED, just like you have this LED that will indicate the page. Now, we have only two pages, so I don't know how much use it actually is today, but it does it. And that's the most important thing. Actually, many people who need an external camera selector, they have like up to 100 cameras or something. So it is likely that you still, yeah, like that. Now, um, let's, 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 let's just uh, go back and... Um, Actually, I want to set up tally information because right now I uh, would love these to actually light up in, in different colors depending on what we are doing here. So if I go in here, I need to select which ME bus I am working with. And that is ME number one. OK, so I just set that one up. And now we see immediately we actually have tally in um, the displays. OK, so I have a physical Stream Deck Studio right here, but I also have the simulated version inside of Reactor. And that's one of the benefits of raw panel. That is, we are exposing the topology of a panel to Reactor so we can actually render a graphical representation of it. And instantly, we have uh, the ability to, to simulate it uh, like we're doing right now. I, I can use these buttons to actually select the camera. And I can even turn the encoder knob like 
virtually using the, the panel here inside of Reactor. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. Now, um, I used this card and it turned out that this will kind of lock and unlock ability to operate the panel. But what about this one? So if I use that one, I'm actually opening up for more. So I decided to make it in such a way that our panel has an admin and a standard user approach. And with the standard user, you can select the camera, you can recall a preset, you can use the joystick, but you cannot change settings for various stuff in the menus. But with the admin access, you have ability to move up here in the menus. And here you can adjust all kinds of things in the cameras. So basically, this is a way to keep um, more basic users away from messing up the camera settings. And I find that is a pretty nice approach uh, for using these. I hope you like it too. Um, anyway, there's actually one uh, thing that I think is, is quite um, important to, to notice. So one thing is that we have this camera selector here. And uh, we can page um, different pages. And instead of having the camera selector on the lower row, we decided to put in our preset recalls. So normally you just click any of these and it will recall a preset on the connected camera. Let's go back to, uh, to this one, CIN300. Uh, I wonder if we have one of those here. That is the one actually. Yes, so um, uh, with this camera, uh, I could recall a preset by pressing a button and you'll see that it's moving to some sort of preset and I press another preset here and it moves to a different location. This is uh, in our showroom and actually the same would happen if I press these uh, buttons here. Maybe we can see if I quickly change over that it's recording uh, or recording that. Okay, so we have presets here, which we could give labels. Those labels can be given on the home screen, by the way. So if you move into the camera selector and you find the camera we are on, currently this is CIN 300, the first one, you can go to presets here, and then you have the ability to um, wide shot, uh, close up. And if you type in labels here, they will actually be reflected on the PTC Extreme. So now you see that those labels are shown right there. But on the Stream Deck, if you notice, we actually have re um, uh, preset recall buttons, but they have images inside. And one thing that I want to show you is that if we are here and we want to store a preset, if I press and hold this button, it will actually store a preset and it will now show the thumbnail of the preset I'll get. Okay, so um, basically, let's just try to do something that is significantly different by just moving this around a little bit. Uh, let me see. We can, um, okay, move over here. All right. Oh, that's some old PC cameras right there. Let's take this one, store on preset number two, press and hold. And there we have the thumbnail for the second shot. Now, I recall this one. And I get the framing I see in the Stream Deck Studio. I can recall this one and I get that framing. So we build in this and I can actually move to a second page. So you have like up to 30 presets here, which you can extend, but there are 30 presets out of the box with the Canon cameras that you can page between and you have those thumbnails right there. And if you change to a different camera, you actually get the same. Now, this is the CIN100, so that would be this camera. Again, press and hold. We'll store this preset. It, it stores the thumbnail, puts it into the displays. Very, very, very powerful. I really love this. So let's just zoom out a little bit and uh, maybe a little bit over to the side here. Okay. And we store that on the second preset here. There we go. Okay. Going back to the first camera, we can recall something on that one. Okay. Recall a preset on that. Go back to the CIN100, uh, recall this preset. And um, yeah, that's basically the exciting thing about having the Stream Deck Studio as a camera selector and also a visual representation of your preset thumbnails, including access control. Hope you like this and uh, feel inspired to try it out. There, I know there are a lot of details that I could also go into, but you can reach out to our support team if you're interested in this solution and want to customize it to your needs.